Louisiana All American Sports Show. Louisiana All American Sports Show. Louisiana All American Sports Show. Louisiana. 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 Louisiana All American Sports Show. Louisiana All American Sports Show. Louisiana All American Sports Show. Louisiana. 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 If the sports you wanna talk about, then listen to the hottest show that's coming out the south. In stereo, good morning, Baton Rouge. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. Today is Saturday, January 30th, 1970. Oh, that was my oh, date of birth. That's, that's, oh, whoopsie, what Daisy. What's that mean? Uh, 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 oh, oh, I'm sorry, I slipped up and said my date of birth. Today is Saturday, <laughs> January 30th, 2016. My date of birth was Saturday, January 30th, 1975. Putting a little work on my birthday and so happy and blessed to be here for, uh, for, for year number 41. Uh, and I'm glad to have everybody in the audience here for the... <laughs> for the fifth edition in the what in the world is that? Wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you know Louisiana All American Sports. We want to wish you. Happy birthday to you. Eric Hatfield. Happy birthday to you. Eric Hatfield. Happy birthday to you, Eric Hatfield. <laughs> Com. Yes, indeed. Hey, not exactly Marilyn Monroe salute to the uh, birthday wish of the president, but but more heartfelt, more personal. <laughs> yeah, well, so thank you, you know. kindly. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm thankful to be here for uh, uh, 41 full years. I'm also thankful to have you, the audience, out here for the fifth edition in the year 2016 of the Louisiana All-American Sports Show. Yes, uh, as you all probably figured out by now, I'm Eric Hatfield. <laughs> and I'm Gerard Piper, a.k.a. Joker P. And uh, Coach Perry Daniels uh, cannot join us today from the nation's capital, but I'm sure he's listening. And, of course, we got we know you're right here with us in spirit. It's going to be hey, it's always an exciting week for sports. It's interesting, though, because it's the penultimate week uh, of uh, the National Football League, the Pro Bowl, of course, coming up tomorrow, and the big, big event coming up uh, next Sunday uh, from Santa Clara, California. Wow. But a lot of sports Great. action going on today, man. But as always, we start out um, uh, with our, our high school scene. And last night, we had the Louisiana All-American Sports Game of the Week. It took us out to Port Allen, Louisiana, for a District 6-3A matchup between the Port Allen Pelicans and the Parkview Baptist Eagles. Uh, all right, but you know, it's funny, man. It seems like, uh, you know, it's funny. I always hear in life that sometimes... Uh, Sometimes what you get associated with chooses you more than you choose what you're associated with. We started off the Louisiana All-American Sports, I guess, experiment, really, five years ago, uh, exclusively providing Madison Prep Academy sports and yeah. branched out to other schools. And we didn't really have a, an agenda per se, but it seems like we've gotten, uh, I don't want to use the word sucked in, but it seems like we, 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 co we cover a lot of District 6-3A and a lot of District 5-5A uh, matchups. And District 6-3A was on the agenda last night, and I'll tell you what, it did not disappoint. Parkview Baptist, by and large, the last, oh, I'd say we've been covering Port Allen pre pretty regularly for about three seasons now, and they've, they've owned Parkview Baptist for the most part. Uh, Parkview Baptist came out swinging last night, and the final score, it was about an 11-point win, but uh, that, that score was misleading because into the fourth quarter, we were tied with just over five minutes to go, and Port Allen basically won the game at the charity stripe, and Coach talks about it all the time, and that's the difference in the game, but it was a really good slugfest. Tyree uh, Lomax of the Eagles, 
uh, helped keep his team in the game. Uh, Nigel Allen, of course, was the leader that he always is, and he was our Louisiana All-American Sports Player of the Week. We are efforting him. Nigel, if you're listening, call us at 343-9927, 343-9927. But uh, also, super honorable mention to Crandall Jackson, number zero for the, uh, for the Pelicans. Seven three-point shots last wow. night. Uh, he put in, I want to say it was 27 total points, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, they made, Park View Baptist made the mistake of leaving him open about three times, learned their lesson, started jumping on him, and then apparently forgot near the end of the game because they let him hit more buckets. It was an outstanding effort. And we're seeing with this Port Allen team, we're seeing a complete team with the Port Allen Pelicans. They've, they've always had complete teams, but we're really seeing guys now. You know, Dontrius Franklin got hit in the face or in the head early in the game, had to come out. Uh, and, and, you know, Andre Williams and... Um, Mike Williams kind of combined to replace him and did an effective job. That's a complete team. Port Allen has come so close but so far away to the top 28 in, dist in uh, Class 3A. Yes. This, I mean, this is a, as good a year as any, and this, is the, this is, might be the best year I've seen, you know, even though we've seen players like Nick Parker you know, and the spark plug Telson Allen come through. This team looks more complete. When you have a complete team and you take any one player out and you can replace somebody in and remain effective, that's the mark of a, good, of, a, of a basketball team that can contend for a title. Well, I wanted to ask you because I couldn't attend the game last night. We want to give shouts out and our prayers go to, uh, you know, our main man, Chan. Absolutely. The man, uh, you know, he was uh, had some personal issues uh, with his family. And I was, our prayers definitely go out. Um, I got word from him that um, his mother is doing a lot better. Oh, that's good. And, um, you know, she's talking and everything. And so, you know, we just want to give thanks. And, man, we just, you know, once again, you know, send our shouts out. Uh, to him and his family. But I couldn't attend the game last night, so I was able to listen to the game. Uh, being here working at the radio station, I was able to, man, get into it, and and I was just like I was there, you know what I mean? I, I, I saw that Port Allen didn't fold when uh, Parkview Baptist ended up getting the lead. You know, they went up mm -hmm. by seven, I think. That's correct. And, <clears throat> and so, but they didn't, you know, and I saw that um, Nigel Allen came down, hit a big three-pointer at the and cut it to four. Correct. And that's what showed me that this team is starting to know how to play. They didn't panic being at home, you know, and they was able to hey, pull away at the end. And Nigel Allen, what a good job. That's why I pretty much kind of had the music on because um, uh, Nigel Allen has been our Louisiana All-American uh, sports player of the game for, I think, the third time or the second time? At least two times. At least two times. It might be three, but it's at least two times. And I was thinking of coming in. I was thinking of Nigel Allen coming in, buddy, and I, I, I thought about – having a Louisiana All-American Sports Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we've, we've had a few players that had, um, you know, a game of the week. Right. And a I couple of co-players of, of the week, too. Yeah, a couple of co-players of the week. And I was thinking of, you know, if, if uh, like, Nigel Allen has two or three of them. I, I got to say, if I could do it all over again, I'd, give, I'd split it and give Crandall Jackson half of last night, honestly. If I could do it all, I got Seven to give, I, I got to give Crandall <laughs> half. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of remembering. Look, well, you know, this is a big Nigel Allen house, but Crandall, hand, Crandall Jackson handled his business. So I just want to make sure, just let you know, young man, if you're listening, I, it did not go overlooked. Right, right. I'm sorry, I, I digress. And big ups, man. It was just for me, and I wanted to ask, but I wanted to ask you to piggyback on what was you, when you were saying, how, how close Port Allen has came in recent years. Uh, what do you see from them now? Do you see more growth? You know what I see? I see more depth. Um, coach Ricard is just out. I can't say enough things about him as a coach. He's an outstanding coach. He runs a very tidy ship. If it was a machine, every uh, little nut would be tightened. Every, um, I don't know mechanical terminology, but the chassis would be well oiled, so to speak. I mean, and they know their assignments, and they don't, they don't, you know how machines you have to tighten them, or like your car, you got to put it back in alignment. He, all he has to do is say, X or Y or Z, and if they're off their game, they, they tighten up quickly. Very well disciplined, very talented athletes. Now, when you're at a public school like Port Allen, you're limited to your, your district, to your base. So, I mean, that's what he's got to work with. But what he has done, he has a complete team. But this team, unlike other teams, they are very deep. I have saw him rotate. I must have counted at least nine players that came into the game during the meaningful part of the game, maybe even ten. Uh, you know, and that's different because last year, and the year before, I didn't see much more than seven, you know, maybe wow. eight. You know, he went as deep as the bench, uh, number 11. I'm going to forget his name, which is a shame. It's uh, something uh, Murphy. I cannot. Kelvin Murphy, I believe his name is. You know, I didn't see him get. You know, I didn't see. He came in. That was about the ninth player that came off the bench. Um, DeQuinton, uh, Davenport, number four, he came in and got a lot of time. They rotated at least nine players, maybe ten in the game during the meaningful part of that game. Uh, when you have that, and they all contributed, you know, uh, and when right, you have that right. kind of depth, when you have a guy like Dontrez Franklin, who's a, a big, strong guy who can shoot, that is invaluable in high school basketball. When he comes out, 
and you can replace him with the likes of, of Mike Williams and to an effect to a degree Andre Williams replacing his role. When you can put those two guys in and replace a fine player like that, man, you got that kind of depth, you can compete. And obviously the target is gonna be on University High's back and with good reason because they have a very good uh, squad over there. They have guys like DJ White who, who will be playing uh, Division One college basketball, have an excellent head coach. But you know, the road is probably gonna go through there, but this team they got that depth, and Nigel Allen, the senior, has stepped his game up. So that's what I see different, and uh, that might be Mr. Allen on the phone. We're going to find out. Joker, yeah, we're going to find out, and I'm going to go through a couple more scores here um, as we. WHYR. Is that our guy? Hey, is that Nigel? Is Nigel? Hey, hang on just a second. That's Nigel. All right, and we're going to have Nigel on. Actually, we can get him on right now. Nigel, you there, my man? What's going on, man? You, well, I want to welcome you to Louisiana All-American Sports. Uh, this is uh, Gerard Piper, a.k.a. Joker P. And I'm joined by um, Eric Hetfield, man. And what a game. Want you, we want you to talk about uh, your game last night. This is the second time you're actually our player of the week. Um, you know, if we're, we're here with Louisiana All-American Sports. So talk about the game last night and how'd you do? Applause. We've got to give this man a hand, man. we got to welcome him. There we go, Louisiana yeah, All-American Sports go. style. Louisiana All-American Sports Player of the Week, Nigel Allen. All right, brother. All right, go ahead, man. Talk about your game last night, man. We were, I don't know if you were listening, but we were just talking about you all and how, how much deeper you guys are this year than last year and how this is. we've covered your program now for three years. We think this is probably the best team that you all have to contend for a title as good as you all been in years past. So that's kind of where the conversation was. So you go right on ahead and, and jump on in. Okay, uh well, yesterday, you know, I guess, you know, they want, I guess, team like Parky, they uh, switched up from the last game. They want to um, put a high 2 3 for me to stop shooting, you know, shooting threes. So it's really important for me to get my team involved and uh, have confidence in my team when they shoot threes and when they start typing goals. So I want to get them started first. That was the open things for, for me, you know, and, you know, it'll be better off, uh, you know, offense. Well, what Nigel said that he's calling on the phone, so in case you didn't hear it, but and correct me if I'm wrong, but you basically said they ran a high 2-3 to try to keep you from shooting threes, so you were right. rotating to your teammates. Obviously, Crandall Jackson got open a couple of times. Does that sum it up correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had to see Crandall a lot because uh, he, was, he was completely hot, so I had to see him. He ended up making some threes this other game. Yeah, Crandall Jackson was on fire. Nigel, uh, tell, talk about, um, and you tell me, you know, because we're just a couple of guys that run our miles on the radio, so you know better than we do, but these are the observations I made about the team. I just said this a moment ago before you called in, that one, that, that Coach Ricard just has a very, very tight, well-oiled machine that never gets out of alignment, that, they, that you guys know your assignments to a T, and that if y'all even get a little bit off your assignments, all he has to do is give a one- or two-word instruction, y'all get back on it. That was my first remark. Mark, so that the discipline. The second part uh, I want to, I'd like you to comment on is the depth. I think you must, must have rotated ten guys into the game during meaningful parts of the game last night, and then when Dontres Franklin went out with the facial injury, how y'all didn't miss a beat setting any substitute. So if you could talk about how disciplined the team is, how everyone knows their role, and then also the depth of the team, please. Okay, well, um, so our team, our guards, our players, all of them. And, nobody, and, and everybody knows the rule, and everybody plays hard defense, and everybody is not scared to make, you know shoot the shoot the uh, shoot three or shoot you know or make you know an important shot. That's what's, uh that's why I like my team because everybody has the confidence to play to go out there and play ball and play with discipline. And then the, the depth. It seems like you guys, like I remember we first started covering Port Allen basketball in 2014, or, uh, and, and it seems like you guys only, only rotated seven people that I saw, maybe eight. Last night I think I saw ten, and the couple of times I've covered you guys, I've never seen less than nine come into the game. Can you talk about the, the use of that depth and how that benefits the team? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we, have, we, have, we have a lot of guards on our team that are ready to play basketball. Like um, the, players, the guards that come off the bench, they're... Uh, they're always ready to come. Like as soon as they come, in, they're always ready to play ball. It's not, it's not, they're, not, they're not missing the beat, and that's what we really need on the team. You know what I mean? From from guards, the big men too. Who who's uh, like uh, Michael Williams, who come off the bench, who come off the bench now. He's ready to come out there and play every time. It's, 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 they don't miss the beat, you know. Whether they're on the court or, or on, starting or on the bench. Uh, yeah, Nigel. I wanted to ask you. Um, this is uh, Joker P. Gerard Piper. I wanted to ask you. Uh, who is your favorite player? Do you have a favorite player in the NBA, or do you pattern your game after a certain player or study 
uh, a certain film of, of people? Um, yeah, I watch uh, I watch a lot of players, a lot of point guards from like Chris Paul, Kyrie. I, I watch mostly sometimes like when uh, I I usually watch like Stephen Curry most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, watch and watch how he you know move out the ball and how he creates shots for the teammates, how he creates shots for himself. Right. Um, you know, right. Dribble and that. Getting to spots on the floor and being able to separate yourself and, and um, just a little bit to be able to get that shot off, especially with an undersized guard. I guess, uh, you know, what Steph Curry is doing this year, we also want you to stay on. Yes, you're one of the guys today, Nigel. Yeah, yeah. Could be, could be. I don't know what your practice schedule is, but you're one of us <laughs> unless you got to go. <laughs> Have you heard of the guy with Oklahoma, uh, uh, Buddy uh, Heil? I'm sorry? Do you know the point guard with um, on Oklahoma LSU plays today? The number one team, Oklahoma in the country, plays against oh, Ben yeah. Simmons. Buddy Howard is a point guard or is a guard for the Oklahoma. He's almost like a Stephen Curry. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. I know you're talking about. Uh, so we're going to be able to. We're going to. We, we got what they call. I told you so. So we're going to pick these games today. We're going to pick <laughs> NBA games, the playoff games, Super Bowl game, and we want to get your picks. <clears throat> you know, on these games. What about that? You don't mind that, do you? Oh, no, no, sir. I don't mind. All right, great. Well, you're going to have a good time today, Nigel. And again, we'd like to thank you for, for joining us. I know yeah, last boy. time we tried to have you on, I know Coach had y'all on a tight, tight schedule. So, And I know he, he makes you guys put, you know, kind of like basketball is your next most important job after school. So uh, I do appreciate you giving us time on your Saturday. I know it's precious. Um, so, uh, so the Joker, what you got for us, man? Uh, well, I was going to go over the um, couple of other scores they had from last night. One more question for Nigel about the Port Allen Pelicans before we. I just because this was this was something I observed. You know, you all were, were it was almost like a prize fight. You guys were throwing punches with uh, with Parkview Baptist last night, and what I saw because the score was tied with, with with five and a half minutes to go in the game, and you guys wound up winning by about eleven points, if I remember. And what I saw is the difference in the game. Besides you, you kind of hitting those those clutch shots was at at the charity stripe. Uh, you guys really were able to separate from from Parkview Baptist at yeah. the free throw line last night. You guys hit a total of two thirds of your shots, which for is about average for a high school team. Of course, Coach Ricard wasn't thrilled with that, but the bottom line is when it counted, you guys got it done. And you guys always seem to be clutch at the free throw line. Y'all y'all rarely have let let your let your team down at the charity stripe. Could you talk about that part of your game and, and why you guys seem to be at least in my view a little more successful than the average team at, at that? Uh well I know Coach Coach Ricard he always stresses out you know getting free throws because I, I I stress out still make free throws too because that's you know free points and I know that that's uh, and at the end of the day when it comes out to a close game free throws and you know make free throws the free throw line is going to really count is going to be really important to the team and my team my whole team knows that too. Like he said, that's a good point. Those are free free points and that's how you win games is yeah. with points. Most, most definitely, I heard the interview last night and and. Uh, and actually, I talked about that in the pregame and during the halftime speech, and Coach uh, Ricard uh, reiterated that at the end of the game when he talked about players having fundamentals and working on your fundamentals of free throws and, like, mid-range type games because players now, they just like three-pointers and dunking. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times, you know, you see an NBA player. Posterizing. You know, but you see a lot of NBA players that's shooting 39%, you know, or, you know, you know, like DeAndre, DeAndre Jordan. Jordan, but I don't know. And I talked about this. I don't know whether it's a mental thing because from what I'm hearing, they say DeAndre Jordan, these guys, uh, you know, Dwight Howard's, and you know, they shooting 80 percent in, in in practice. I heard that with Shaq too. You know, in practice they shoot good free throws, but when they get in the game, so I think some of it has to do with a little mental too. You know, so um, but um, Coach Ricard talked about having the fundamentals, and so that's that's a real big thing you can be able to make those free points. Shout out to yeah. Carla King walking yeah, in shout here. Shout out to Carla King. 96.9 <laughs> FM. It takes, it takes a village. It takes a village. <laughs> yeah, it does take a village to raise these kids. <laughs> <laughs> these kids bad. <laughs> but, anyway. <laughs> but back to uh, uh, other area high school uh, scores we had last night. Bel Air wins over uh, Woodlawn 58-49. to We're going to watch those boys. You got to watch them boys. Denham Springs wins 61-53 to over Walker. Uh, Dunham Beats uh, Lee sixty-five to forty-nine. Uh, McKinley, McKinley Boy. beats East Ascension fifty-eight to forty. Man, by eighteen with all of the turmoil that's going on over there now. You know, I gotta give, I gotta give. Uh, I gotta get him a shot. Yeah, I man. Oh, I got, I got one right. Oh, yeah, I had one. Never mind. Up. I thought I had one for McKinley. Never, but I gotta give, oh, him, I gotta give him some applause. Gotta, I gotta, gotta do like, I gotta, gotta get my Lady up. Gaga on and give him some applause, applause, yep. applause. <laughs> yeah, McKinley got to raise that volume. Yeah, there we go. Give him some applause, applause. Like the McKinley Panthers. Let me tell you, 
This is another school, District 55A, it's that other district that we've seen to cover a lot. And this is a team that they, they've, they've been on that cusp of the top 28. And, of course, Coach Perry Daniels says, hey, the top 28 is not the goal. A championship is the goal, and I feel that. But, you know, you've got to walk before you can fly. They haven't been in the top 28 since 2012 when they lost to Scotlandville in the finals. And they've been on the cusp, and they've had a lot of coaching changes. And uh, they had a coaching change uh, in midseason. They had a coaching change last year and then another one midseason. But this team continues to perform, and that's a testament to those those students. I mean, that goes straight to the students when you have that much uh, – let's face it, instability at the top of your program, they keep on winning, and they beat an East Ascension team that, frankly, and looked like on the road, on the road, the team yeah. that looked like they would take district. They went last week and handled their business, you know. So McKinley um, is first in district because they're undefeated. They're they're 5-0 and now. Correct. In, in district play, and so, you know, what a what an awesome win, and you know, what a great win for the, for that program. Northeast beats Capitol 54-41. to 41. Uh, Plaquemine um, wins against St. Michael 53 to 49. Scotlandville wins big 85 to 23 over Live Oak. Ooh, that's uh, a that's a dead oak. That's yeah, a rotten oak. They need yeah. to chop that one down before it hurts somebody. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like poison oak. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, St. Amar wins 75 over Broadmoor 75 63. And speaking of St. Amar, they, they came off that win over district win over Broadmoor. We will be having the St. Amar Gators at the McKinley Panthers in a District 5-5A matchup next week, Friday night, 7 p.m. right here on 96.9 FM WHYR, streaming at WHYR.org. And University High, U High wins 54 to 35 over Bruley, over our boys in Bruley, you know. So That District 63A is a fool, man. Yeah. Uh, and Zachary wins over Central 57 to 34. White Castle wins uh, 61 to 49 over Ascension Catholic. So those are your local scores in the local Baton Rouge area. You know, you want to go to the music? Yeah, let's go ahead and hit that music break. Nigel, you just, like I said, stay with us. You're one of the, fe you're one of the fellas today. Yeah, you're one of the fellas today. You're going to hang in. You know, we kind of. Got a little old school vibe over here, you know. We're not young guys over here, <laughs> so you know, you I might play some things you <laughs> you may have never heard before, you know. But I got a group. It's an old school group. Uh, when I came out, I mean, when I was young, and so um, it's a group called Gangstar. You oh, know, and Gangstar! Yes, Gangstar, indeed. Gangstar, the guru. And man, you know, back then they was they was hot. They still hot to me. They're mass appeal. That's oh. right, mass appeal. You must know what I'm talking about. Check it out. Oh, it is mass appeal. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to play. You got ready? Yes. I'm going to keep my whole tool. No, no, yeah. Mass appeal, yeah. What you know about that? What you know about that, night? <laughs> you know, listen. I heard the song, folks. I heard the song, folks. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Heard all right. Yeah, okay, I well, down. You, oh, okay, well, you must be a little student of hip hop. You're a student of hip hop, or are you just strictly on from like 2010 to now? <laughs> Oh, no, no, I'm still in the boat. All right. Okay. I like okay. that. Down with the old school, down with the new school. I like that. Right, right, Good. right. Smart right. young man. Smart fella. Yes, indeed, So, man. Uh, So now we're going to go ahead, as we've talked about the young men on the high school scene, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, ramp it up a little level and... Uh, uh, and, and get to the uh, the Where adults, the uh, the uh, the young adults, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and head on over uh, to the bluff as we got a lot of action going on on the college scene. Yeah, the SU Jaguar. <laughs> So the Southern University Jaguars, they are on fire, like yeah, yeah, fire. as Mystica would say. Uh, they are riding uh, a five-game winning streak. Uh, the Jags, after getting off to, you know, after hitting a speed bump, let's face facts, to start the new year and to start SWAC play, they went to Texas, got slapped around a little bit by a couple of teams in the Houston area, by Texas Southern, that, as far as I'm concerned, is the champ. And until you knock out the champ, you're still a contender. And, of course, they lost to uh, Prairie View uh, A&M. 
Uh, but then they came back, and they've been ripping off win after win after win after win. So the Jags are red hot. They're on fire. They're in the midst of a three-game homestand. They, they uh, had a, a win on national television on ESPNU to show the country what they yeah. might have coming for them yeah. in the big dance should, this, should their success continue. So, look, Joker, I'm, I'm liking the vibe. Let me ask you a question because, you know, I, I watch them on TV and stuff. But I'm wondering, you know, I know you, you probably might be a little bit more connected to some of the folks that, that, that have kind of been down with the Jags for years. What's the, kind of the vibe? What are you hearing in the neighborhood and kind of in the community about the uh, – about the Jaguars, <clears throat> I'm hearing good things about the Jaguars. You know, it's um, the Jaguars. The it used to be a real big presence and a real big energy with you know with Southern with the basketball team. I, I think now it's been kind of shifted a lot more to the football team, mm -hmm. uh, where more attention is kind of played more to the um, is, is paid more to the football team. But the basketball team, with the resurgence of of um, the coach and I think the restrictions of the the probation. Mm -hmm. um, kind of stifled it a little bit too and kind of, you know, took away from it. But now with the record, you know, people are back talking about it with um, with, with the return of, of junior guard Traylon Banks, you mm -hmm. know, and the players they have now and, and, and Coach Banks. I mean, <clears throat> man, you know, I just – I like I, I like what I'm seeing. Me too. I'm just hoping that they can get a berth into the tournament so they can get some national recognition. You know, for Southern to get their berth into the tournament, in all probability they're going to have to win their conference tournament, and that's right. ultimately going to go through Texas Southern. Right. You know, and they've they've had trouble with Texas Southern because Texas they Southern have. is right now they're the king of that conference right now. Um, you know, I, I, by the way, I need to correct myself. I said Southern was riding a five game winning streak. That is wrong. They're riding a six game, six game. winning streak. They they uh, Molly Wap, Grambling State, Jackson State, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Mississippi Alabama. Valley. State, Alabama State, and Alabama A&M. Uh, they, uh, they have Alcorn State coming up today, coming up from the state of Mississippi, and they're going to play that game in the F.G. Clark Activity Center today. That's going to be at 5 o'clock. Uh, it is not going to be on uh, TV or radio, but there is going to be a video link available to the action on GoJagSports.com. That's GoJagSports.com, 5 o'clock. So if you, cannot make it across, if you cannot make it to the bluff, to F.G. Clark, you will be able to see that game online. But, um, you know, uh, a Joker, I, I, I'm looking at this Southern team. They're, they're playing well. They, they, they've bent but not broken. And I think having Traylon Banks back in the lineup yeah. ha has been that little boost they need to kind of separate them. And really, the way this team is playing and the way Coach Banks has them focused, and I see a lot of focus. I don't see a lot of mental lapses under the bu under the buckets or on defense, the kinds of things that can undo a smaller school. I believe that if this team continues to remain focused, it's they're going to be on a collision course with Texas Southern, and that is going to be where the SWAC uh, championship is decided and whether or not uh, Southern does get into the big dance. They just have to stay the course and exactly. and and continue to continue to put that grind in. And I think that's pretty much the strategy, and that's that's your goal. You know, uh, sooner or later, the two giants are going to probably have to meet for that conference. That's the only way you're going to be able to get into the big conference is by winning that, that tournament, the conference tournament. And so you pretty much lining yourself up and trying to position yourself um, and get your team to, to um, click at the right moment. And, start get, and I think this is the right moment to start playing well, to start getting that momentum and start playing. So, hey, you know, you got your center, uh, Deadrian Allen. He also returned to the Jaguars lineup Absolutely. to kind of boost, booster up that, um, that front court a little bit. And you got, you know, Jared Sam. You know, so from Scotlandville, who yeah. can ball up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had 15 points in the uh, six rebounds in the last win they um, that they had. So I think they're starting to come around a lot. So we're going to see where they're going to go. So I'm going to pick Southern, of course, to, to win in the state of Mississippi. Well, actually, and yeah, yep. Against this, it's a kind of against the state of Mississippi. I might have, I might have led the audience the wrong way. It is here at FG Clark, so right. it is here in Baton Rouge. Uh, I, Alcorn State's playing good basketball. I was kind of doing a little research on them. I mean, they're, they've had some, some, some. I guess what I'll say. Comfortable victories. I mean, they defeated Alabama State uh, most recently. I believe that was their last win, and that was a comfortable multi-possession uh, win. I, because Southern is at home, they're not having to travel, uh, and I think I think they have the hotter hand compared to Alcorn State. So I like the uh, the Jaguars uh, in this game at home. I think the home field advantage, home court advantage, rather at the Avery Johnson Court. Is go is going to be just enough to what tips this advantage in this game to the Southern Jaguars. Uh, we got uh, Nigel Allen on the line. Nigel, would you like to weigh in and make a make a pick in this uh, Southern Alcorn State game? Um, I you know I don't think I think Southern's going to pull out. You know what I mean? I really think Southern's going to pull out this game. <laughs> 
Good call. The young folks, if you notice, they always pick Southern, and they know where the bread's buttered. They know where the bread is buttered. <laughs> but, hey, but we got you on record. So next week, we want you to listen to the show. We're going to have what they call a I Told You So remix, and we're going to put all of our picks, and we're going to find out who was right and who was wrong. And the one that was right gets to say... I told, I told you so. That's right. And, uh, you know, uh, we had our in-studio guest, Tyrese Radford. Don't worry, we're going to get your picks in. We had a, we had a, um, oh, my computer had a problem, so I couldn't put one together. But we're going to make sure, young man, if you're listening, we're going to get your picks on the air last week. You hit a few, you hit a couple, and you swung and missed on a couple. So we're going to have that, but we'll have that next week uh, se- uh, uh, um, the I told you so segment. So uh, Southern University, there's a, by the way, there's some news in, um, in the swag, I just wanted to touch on very, very briefly. Uh, Coach Rim of Prairie View A and M resigned. Um, not sure what the issue was there. Uh, midseason, Prairie View was one of those teams. I mean, they, 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 you know, they punched Southern in the chest a little bit earlier. They've had a very competitive program. This is one of the better schools in the swag. So I'm not sure what the issue was there. Uh, at Prairie View, but Coach Rim has stepped down. Uh, if that story advances, if there's anything uh, more telling, we'll, we'll advance that to you. But interesting uh, interesting news in the SWAC. And, of course, with him stepping down, that always indicates a, a, a vulnerability in that program and an opportunity in the SEC uh, West for, you know, an opportunity in the SEC West for, for Southern to exploit. So uh, we'll keep you, uh, keep you advised of that as that continues to advance. So, as we've uh, discussed... The uh, Southern Jaguars, um, we got to go ahead and gas up the car uh, right there by the chicken shack, get a little something to eat there, and um, head on uh, down uh, in the caddy. Uh, We're going to go... On the other side of town, moving quickly, rubbing swiftly in the hoopy rock. Uh, on the other side of town, the LSU, big game, national television, the yeah. eyes of the nation upon us. We got uh, Ben Simmons. I cannot pronounce the other kid's name, so Joker, I'm going to let you say it. Buddy Heil. Buddy Heil. Uh, it's going to be a matchup of guards, a matchup of talents. As number one, Oklahoma University comes to the PMAC on a nationally televised game uh, to face the LSU Tigers. The yeah, LSU yeah, Tigers... Yeah are deceptively hot. I use that term, deceptively hot. Uh, that game is at 3.25 p.m., and I'll get you the television information in just a moment, uh, television and radio information in just a moment. I say LSU's been deceptively hot because they are riding a winning streak. There's it's no... actually going to be today at 4 o'clock on ESPN. It's going to be a big day on ESPN. It's a doubleheader that they have um, Oklahoma against LSU. At LSU, I heard the tickets was two and three hundred dollars to go down there. Oh, I, I, I believe it. I mean, it's not too often. You know, there are only a couple of games where you're going to be able to to. to you're, you're right. My bad. I, it is four o'clock. Sorry about that, Joker. Uh, but that game is going to be uh, on ESPN and also on radio ninety eight point one FM. If you uh, are unable to get by a TV, but yeah, number one Oklahoma. You know, a number one or number one team comes down. That is not Kentucky, and of course when Kentucky comes, that's when the the tickets get gouged a little bit. This is going to be a matchup. LSU's been deceptively hot. What do I mean by deceptively hot? Okay, they beat Arkansas, a very quality Arkansas opponent at home. They've won four of their last five SEC contests. Let's put that out there. They beat number nine Kentucky earlier this year. Uh, They defeated Ole Miss. They defeated Arkansas. They lost badly to Texas A&M in College Station, but it was a road game, so, you know, it's hard to win. It's just hard to win on the road, period, and particularly in SEC play. Then they went to Alabama, where they have not won in Alabama uh, in 12 years and defeated them and and handed it to Coach Avery Johnson, who I thought would get the better of them. And then they came and they, they actually, they for the first, how should I put it? You got 40 minutes in the college basketball game. For the first 39 of them, I thought they solidly outplayed Georgia. And then Georgia made a an, an, an un- what I call an unacceptable rally at the very end uh, as they, they scored 12 points in about 20 seconds. But LSU did hold out to win on national television again, uh, 89-85. So they, they're, they're winning, but I, I'd still like to see more. I'd like to see some more consistency. And if this team is going to live up to its potential, uh, they got number one Oklahoma coming today. Now, let me say that I I don't I, LSU does have some shortcomings uh, under the bucket uh, for people not named Ben Simmons they do have some shortcomings but they play well like when the when the 
they play to the level of the opponent, and the opponent's level is up. I expect Oklahoma to win this game. I think Oklahoma has more parts and pieces. But I expect LSU to keep it competitive right to the bitter end. I really do. Uh, LSU seems to play up against good opponents. So we'll see what they're made of. Uh, they, they've got to step their game up. They cannot do like they did when they went to College Station. They're at home. They've got to defend their house. They're going to be on national TV. But uh, my expectation is that LSU loses in a good prize fight against the Oklahoma Sooners today. Oh man, it's going to be a great, 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 great matchup. This is this is almost to me. This is a college uh, matchup of almost like Golden State and Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> mm, that's a good analogy. Because, I like that. You Joker. know, uh, Ben Simmons. Is, you know, they they call him like the next LeBron James, almost like a Lamar Odom, LeBron James mm -hmm. type of guy. Can handle the ball. Number one, he's going to be the number one pick uh, coming into the twenty sixteen uh, draft. This guy, Buddy Howell, I don't know if people don't really know this guy or they haven't really seen him play, but this guy's like Stephen Curry in college. And well, I remember Steph Curry <laughs> this guy in college. 46 Curry. on yep. Kansas in a double overtime win uh, this season. This guy here can shoot the ball from when he comes across half court, is he, he has no no range. His he, range is unlimited. He was the guy that put Oklahoma on the map, really, because Oklahoma was just another solid top 25 team. And when they punched Kansas in the face, and that was in – that was in Kansas, right? Right. Uh, that that uh, that was that got a lot of eyes open and said, "Whoa, this is right. this is a different kind of OU team." Out. Well, when you see him play and and the type of shots that he makes, he has range and, he, and he's fearless, and that's what I and that's what I like about him. Ben Simmons is a total package. He is a, a can't miss player. I think he is going to be an, a perennial NBA All Star player, not just a player who makes the NBA and can possibly make a roster. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about he is going to be an NBA All Star type of a player, but the only thing that I question with him is the killer instinct. You know what I mean? Uh, Sometimes when you're so talented, you know, you be kind of lackadaisical in a sense because you've been so talented. Mm -hmm. You're just so gifted above everybody else. But you have to, you know, with me, and he's young, so I'm not saying, that, you know, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he, 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 he's, he don't want to win. Of course he wants to win. But uh, I just want to see a little bit more dog in him. You right, know what a little, I mean? little more dog in the fight. A little bit more dog in him on top of, of, of the, on the top of the talent, you know, and uh, develop that jump shot. But I just think that, of course, I think Oklahoma's going to win this game. Um, but I think that this is just a showcase because it's going to national televised game. This is going to be a showcase uh, for Ben Simmons. I think he's going to have a big game. He's going to he's going to shine. Um, this is going to be on, in the spotlight, and he's going to shine today. Nigel, I'm sure you've had an opportunity to see Ben Simmons a little bit. What do you think? Of, what do, tell me your opinion of, of Ben Simmons. What what you see, and just give me your two cents. Oh, uh, yeah, he's uh, extremely talented. I know that. I know he's extremely talented, and he's a uh, he, he's a uh, like very like um, he knows how to get people involved. He knows he's he's extremely good at uh, facilitating. I know. I know for sure. He is a heck of right. a facilitator. His IQ is, 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 you know, and that's why people compare him to LeBron James. He's the type that just knows how to facilitate. And at that height, six foot nine, and he's um, ambidextrous, so he's really a left-hander, but he primarily plays with his right hand. He can go to that lane, the ball, the, the hole at the right. It's impressive. And so, you know, so who you who you got in this game? Uh, well, I know uh, they play against Oklahoma, and I know Oklahoma's going to be a tough team to beat, but I still, I still got a little shoe, you know, in the game. Whoa. It, it, I feel like they'll play good against, uh, you know, I feel, feel like they'll, they'll be ready to play, you know, in this, in this type of game. They'll be ready to play, you know, completely. All right, so you heard I it. I like that pick. You heard it here first, man. Nigel, Nigel Allen picks uh, LSU over number one Oklahoma. <laughs> Ooh, the crowd is stunned. Uh, Nigel, let me ask you a question. I'm just curious about your opinion as a, as a, as a basketball player. Uh, w when you see Ben Simmons, is there, if, there were, if there were anything that you thought could improve, in his game, what what would what would you what, if you could sit down with Ben Simmons and say, "Hey Ben, I like your game, but this is what I see. You could do better." What would you tell him? Um, the only thing that I would improve uh, about that, I think he would improve, he should improve his game is um <clears throat> is uh, mostly his, his jump shot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's the that's the uh, I I see him improving. Nigel, I'm in agreement with you. I'm, I'm glad that a, a basketball player, somebody who, who does it, goes to the grind every day, made the same observation I did. I think if he works that jump shot, if he could even hit a good 17, consistent 17-foot jump shot, kind of like yeah. David West. You know when David West is open, if he's wide open for 17 yeah. feet, he's got it. If he can become like that, oh, my goodness, this kid could be, yeah. he could be the next coming. He really could be. So I, I'm feeling you on that. Uh, if I'm going to uh, want to go ahead and pipe in the, uh, the CBS music here as we want to go ahead and, 
We'll talk about some of the other. We had a lot of really, really, really good college basketball uh, action uh, coming in today. So, of course, we got to, when you got college basketball, there's only one tune, at least for me personally, there's only one tune that gets me right for college <laughs> basketball. And that's, uh, that's it. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling it now. And, folks, if you are a college basketball fan, this is a great day to plop down in front of the television set. Uh, we have number 11, Virginia. They are going to number 16, Louisville. You already know that's going to be a, 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 a prize fight as a Coach Rick Pitino is going to start. He kind of does it every year. He kind of gets his team ramping up slowly. Uh, for That game is going to be on CBS, actually. It's ironic we had the music queued up for that game. That's going to be right after the show at 12 o'clock. I like Louisville in that game. Uh, Virginia just bores me to tears and doesn't put the ball up enough, and I think Coach Patino will take advantage of that. Uh, I'm going with Louisville in that game. Uh, Iowa State going to Texas A&M. This one does not sound sexy. It does not sound sexy, but it's going to be a really good game. First of all, Texas A&M is the number five team in the country, and if you're not a, a, a college basketball uh, super junkie, uh, or, or if you know, if you're not from the, the you're not from Texas, you might not know that. But Texas A&M is playing outstanding basketball this year. They are the you know South Carolina, Frank Martin. Uh, they they were kind of the sto the the story du jour early in the year before Alabama knocked them off. But I think Texas A&M is the real um, sleeper story out of the Southeastern Conference. They are hosting Iowa State. The first year Iowa State has not had coach Fred Hoiberg at the helm, but Fred Hoiberg did a good job teaching his people because they're just as competitive as they were before. They're at College Station, and I, I don't see it. They have a, I'm telling you, those fans there, when they have a, it's a football school, but when they have a reason to get excited, those fans are just as manic as anything else. They'll support anything in Aggie, Maroon, and White. I like the Aggies in that game today. You like the Aggies? Yes, I like sir. the Aggies too. Uh, I think uh, Texas A&M um, actually surprised me this year, being as good as they are, uh, ranked number five. So I'm going to definitely go with them, Texas A&M. Um, there is also one more big matchup. Get Nigel. Oh, I'm sorry, man, Nigel. Yeah, my, 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 my bad. I forgot my manners. <laughs> Iowa State of Texas A&M. You got a pick, man? Uh, I'm gonna choose. Texas A&M, Okay, and then we got number 11, Virginia, and number 16, Louisville. Um, I choose uh, Louisville. Though. I like that pick. Virginia yeah, like just, as good as Virginia is, God, they put me to sleep. And I just think, Pati you know what it is with Coach Patino? I think the average coach cannot handle Virginia's defense because they are – extremely well coached and will smother you and they know how to keep the ball away and, and they know how to get it but Coach Patino is the guy he can he's the I call it the gimmick killer and I'm not saying Virginia's defensive scheme is gimmicky I'm just saying that uh, it's 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 a little it, it has limitations and, and Coach Patino can take advantage of it big game Big game in the uh, Midwest today. Number 20, Kentucky goes to number four, Kansas. Uh, I got to say, look, I have the utmost respect for Coach Cal, but, but Coach Self, except for that, 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 that gut, gut punch they took from Oklahoma, has looked almost, I'm not going to say flawless, but they've looked really solid in their playing at Kansas uh, at the Allen Fieldhouse. Uh, I just don't see the Wild. The Wildcats aren't quite, they don't have the teeth that they've had in the last couple of years. I like the Jayhawks in this game. That's going to be at 6 o'clock on ESPN right after the LSU game. Um, yeah, that's going to be a doubleheader um, after the LSU game. Um, of course, Kansas is ranked high, and, and Kentucky is not what they used to be, but I'm going to go with the upset pick here. Really? And go with the Kentucky Wildcats to defeat um, Kansas today. Uh, I just got a feeling that Patino is going to pull something out of his hat. Kentucky does have blue chip players. They do have the players. They just haven't played together as a team, and he hasn't got them to buy into the system and really no he really hasn't got the chemistry work you know worked out yet so but um they do have the talent down there in Kentucky but I I expect them today to pull an upset and beat Kansas Nigel uh, Kentucky at Kansas um I think I think Kentucky's going to be in too Wow. A lot of SEC love. A lot of SEC love coming from Young Worcester. I mean, look, I'd like to see in the interconference matchup, I absolutely would like to see Kentucky win. I just, uh, you know what I think is going to be the key in this game? Um, and it's, it's, it's not going to be Tyler Eulis or, or, or Jamal Murray or, Mark, or even Marcus Lee, as good as they are. I really think the key is going to be a, a role player, and that's, that's Alex Poitras. And I think if he is, if he stays out of foul trouble, if he makes himself a menace in the lane, if he if he may, if he's smart, if his head's in it, they could put a lot of pressure on Kansas that they're not expecting. And Porter just doesn't put up a lot in the box score. But I've noticed when his games are off, Kentucky is off. 
Uh, and I think that could be a difference. That's just my two cents, but what do I know? I'm just a guy that runs my mouth on the radio. So uh, those are all the hot matchups that we have uh, in college basketball. I don't think I left anything out here. No, I did oh, not. No. So, uh, look, well, so look, we got to talk. We have not had a chance to talk a whole lot of NBA, and with uh, this being the first uh, – first week where there's not a, an NFL game that actually counts, that's not an exhibition, this is just as good a time as any to talk about some of the NBA. Um, you know, there's a very controversial story earlier this week uh, in which uh, Blake Griffin, um, uh, how should I put this, exposed an equipment manager to some Blake Foo uh, earlier this week. Uh, uh, Los Angeles Clippers star forward Blake Griffin, who was already nursing uh, a quad injury, was, was scheduled to come back any day now, uh, broke his hand. He'll be out, I believe, four to six weeks now with a broken hand because he punched an equipment manager in the face following uh, an altercation uh, at a restaurant. And this equipment manager, this is one of his boys. I mean, they've been seen joking on the sideline and stuff like that. He, and he even said so himself in a, in a statement that uh, they had uh, an that he had an altercation with a friend that got out of control. All I can say with the Los Angeles Clippers is, uh, well, one thing. When I think of them, uh, here is the Los Angeles Clippers soundtrack. <laughs> You know, ever since Donald Sterling bought that team in the late 70s in San Diego and pretty much forced his way into Los Angeles in the mid-1980s, and, and that, that team has been a dysfunctional circus act. Uh, finally, he was forced out uh, the year before, uh, season before last because of, of his controversial or racially charged statements. Uh, I'll tell you that I think if Donald Sterling wasn't so hated and reviled by the owners, I don't know if they'd have pushed him out. But nonetheless, Steve Ballmer, who's very respected in the business community, former CEO at, uh, at Microsoft, bought the team. But I'll tell you, that dysfunctionality has not completely weaned out of that organization yet. It might take a few years because it's the same old circus act with the Clippers. It's always something with these guys. And here we are again, Blake Griffin, who, you know, I watched during the games, people... You know, I watch guys take shots at Blake Griffin during the games, elbows and stuff they shouldn't be doing, and he takes it in stride. He's mild-mannered. He doesn't retaliate. I would love to know what was said to him at a restaurant to make him punch this dude in the face, then chase him out in the parking lot and hit him again to punch a co-worker. Now he's, he's hurt his team. He's not coming back. And granted, the Clippers have been rolling pretty well in the regular season without Blake Griffin. But, you, you know, you're trying to compete with Oklahoma City for that third spot. I don't think they're going to catch San Antonio or Golden State. But you're, you're playing for home field, for home court at stake. Memphis is right behind him. Dallas is right behind him. And you're missing a guy like that? that you're hurting your team. So I, I don't know what in the world going on there uh, with the Clippers, but it seems to me to be the same old dysfunctional show. The only thing I can say is it's good for guys like you and me, Joker, because it gives us something to talk about, but uh, what what in, in what in, in the name of Doc Rivers is going on there, Joker? Hey, man, uh, you know, I, I've called for, uh, actually, I've called for Doc Rivers to, to step down because I think that uh, look, the Clippers have underachieved um, in the playoff. They, I think they have the complete team. They have everything you need. They got a point guard, the best one of the best point guards in the league. They got a big man, Blake Griffin. They got a center, DeAndre Jordan. They got a six man, uh, Jamal Crawford. They got a shooter, three pointer. They got JJ Reddick. They got they got you know, sick talent. Hey, they got Paul Pierce. They got all this talent. They get up two one in the playoffs against. <clears throat> actually, they get up three one. Had the foot on the neck against Houston. Lose at home to uh, three up three two. You know, then lose the series. That 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 happened. That has happened. I think in the last two or three years, they've lost. In, um, you know, leads in the series, you know. So to me, that's just, even though Doc Rivers won a, and his name just, you know, we know him as Doc Rivers. So, you he you know, I think he, he does have hardware. Yeah, he, he does have some hardware. So that kind of is, is giving him a break, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's kind of sustaining him a little bit. But to me, the, the Clippers are just underachieving. They got all the talent in the world to and experience and everything. There's nothing that they don't have. They have the veterans. They got it all. So, I just don't understand why they don't win as much as they should or at least get to the finals or at least get to the cha conference championship. And look, you know, the Houston Rockets, props to them last year, but there was internal strife. They wanted up firing Kevin McHale earlier this year, and this is a team that did make the conference finals, right? So you have a team that has its own problems, and yet they came in and still ripped a 3-1 lead away from you on, and mostly on your home court. But it's the th game to talk about is the San Antonio game. That's going to be the third game. It's, it's, a, th it's a triple header. Um, you know, we have LSU and Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and then you have Kentucky and Kansas. And after that game, San Antonio and the Cavs. 
And, and that's so, big. That's going to be a big game, especially after go uh, after we seeing, um, you know, Golden State doing what they're doing this year. Stephen Curry now is, to me, replaced LeBron James as the best Ooh. player in the world. He is the best player in the world. Joe, are, uh, are you telling me that you think that LeBron's uh, seat at Mount Rushmore has been taken by by little bitty Steph Curry? I, I, now, I'll, I'll what say is, this, what though. does the audience think about that? Uh, audience? <laughs> I'll say this. But I, I, I will digress and say this. Now, when it comes to, let's say we, I wanted to start a franchise, then I'm going to start with LeBron James. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But individually-wise, just who's the best player? Who is the best player? Then I'm going to have to go right now with Stephen Curry, man. I got to go with him. Nigel, you <laughs> feeling that, man? You think Steph Curry's knocked LeBron off his block? Uh, yeah, I believe Steph Curry. He, he, uh, yeah, he's the best player. I believe he's the best player in the world. <laughs> I'm stunned in Nepal. I'm, I'm, all, I'm still on Team LeBron for right now, but hey, I see where y'all are coming from. I'm not saying you guys are, 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 are loco. Um, the um, yeah, um, and that's what I was saying as far as what he's doing this year and not only, you know, their team. I think they're going to win 72 or may, they may win 74, 75 games this year. That means they will only lose seven or eight games in the out of 82. Eclipsing the 96 Bulls. Exactly. So why would I think that a team, is if they only lost seven or eight games out of 82, then how do I think someone is going to beat them four games right, out, <laughs> out of seven. seven in the playoffs? You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, here's the thing, though, is that in the playoffs, they'll be, you know, they're not going to play Sacramento or Denver or New Orleans or you Phoenix. The same team. They're going to be playing San Antonio, Oklahoma City. <laughs> Even the Clippers. I mean, it's going to be a different level. And look, San Antonio and Cleveland, that could be a finals preview. By the way, audience, that game will be at 7.30 tonight on ABC. That's their Saturday night. I love their Saturday night primetime thing. I like what they're doing with that. Um, but look, uh, you know, two other big stories in the NBA that we want to get to before we talk about the, you know, the uh, uh, the, the sport that's become a religion down here. I just got news, too, in the last, I think it was on Twitter. They got a call. Johnny Manziel has a story. Oh, oh no! Investigators were no, called to his no. house in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, with an incident about him and his oh. girlfriend again. No arrest. They're not saying nothing, but still, just boy, boy, Manziel. boy. I was, you know, and people who've listened to the show since day one know I was, I was Team Manziel in his last year at Texas and M. Boy, I'm selling that team. I'm selling that team to Steve Ballmer, <laughs> who like Donald Sterling did. But uh, take it. Shoot, yeah, no, no kidding. But uh, look, another story in the NBA we got to talk about is that Cleveland Cavaliers coach uh, David Blatt was fired earlier this week. You know, I can't remember another time in my life where a, a head coach was a defending conference champion. The following year, midseason, near the All-Star break, had his team solidly in first place in the division and the conference and got fired. And that tells you the kind of disconnect that there was between he and his team. But when the team is having success and he is still that disconnected from his squad, look, we, we, we can hear all the stories and the media can spin it. We know LeBron got him fired. Yeah, LeBron and, got him out of there. And the word on the street is that LeBron didn't have to say anything. But if you know your star, if you're a good GM and good owner, you know what your you star's feeling. Right, exactly. And I don't think, he, you know, the team wasn't vibing. David Blatt was a guy who had a lot of experience overseas won championships overseas, but it did not translate into respect from his team. And he had a couple of slip-ups last year yeah, that I did. think cost him that locker room. So they put Tyron Lu, a former NBA player in there, former Laker, and he had a, a stint with another team I can't remember. Yeah, see, he came in trying he, – he came in before LeBron Correct. came back. So um, I think it was the right move. I just think that the timing of it wasn't right. Right, you know, mid-year, Because right? I think, you know, basically I think they should have – you know, during the off season, maybe after he lost, you know, the championship, went on ahead and tried to do it then. Now, the way the record looked and the way the team is doing so good, it looks like it's not the right thing to do. But really, you could see David Blatt wasn't really the coach. Wasn't not really for coaching that team. The team. Not for that team. When he was exactly. hired, he was the right. I think he David Blatt right. would be a good coach for a young but building when team. Came back, it made it something right. different. That was a, you know, a the moment was too big. Right, rebuild the team. Remember right. when they had Andrew Wiggins. Mm -hmm. Before LeBron and all that came, then, hey, I'm going to bring in this new guy, new NBA type of coach. He never had a NBA smart guy and see if we can build with him. Right. And then he can use his power and his control. He had more influence. Now, when LeBron comes, 
I'll tell you, I wouldn't mind if uh, Mr. Blatt took a trip down the south <laughs> in the next season. I'll just leave it at that. You know what, the Pelicans? Yeah, but, but for all that, all, Alvin Gentry, we'll talk about the Pelicans more uh, going forward, but Alvin Gentry's got to get a chokehold on that. Although I'll say this much, in spite of all that, the Pelicans have won six of their last ten, and they are only three and a half games back in the final playoff spot. But that team, oh, my God, I, I just I just want to put my face in my palm with New Orleans sports this but who year. Is, uh, Nigel, who is your uh, uh, favorite NBA team? Um, right now I have to uh, like a real true favorite NBA team. You like uh, players? I really like, yeah, I, I like you know the players, but I really like uh the Golden State Warriors and how they like you know how they feel in sync with themselves and the team. <laughs> So I'll tell you what. First of all, coming up in three minutes, we have Noel Jackson, Jackson with music satisfaction here on 96.9 FM WHYR. But naturally, we can't leave. Even though there's no football this week, we can't have a Sunday, a Saturday without talking about the what? National Football what? League. And Joker, the National Football League, uh, they served up... Uh, you already know what the, what, the, what the story is. Oh, yeah, you man. You know who it's about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. We, uh, we got to, you know, it's, it's one, there's one man everyone's talking about this week. There's it's one, one man. man that everybody's talking about uh, this week. And, uh, and who is that? Oh, well, that, that's... Oh, hang on a second. That's my man. That... Uh, uh, Beavis. Could uh, it be? Uh... Oh, I'm having some. I'm having some 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 dyslexia. Here we go. All right. So yeah, one guy everyone's talking about, and that is Cam. Oh, Cam. Cam Newton. Uh, Cam Newton has gotten the Carolina Panthers to the second Super Bowl in franchise history. His first. Uh, he's all but assured to be the MVP of the NFL. Absolutely dismantled the Arizona Cardinals defense, one of the best, I think one of the top three defenses in the National Football League, quite frankly, and tore them to pieces. Uh, they're going to go face the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl Super 50. Bowl. Denver Broncos, in my opinion, has the best defense in the NFL, but you know, after tearing up Seattle and Arizona, who I think are also top three defenses, those are my top three, Denver, Seattle, Arizona, they right. tore those two to pieces. I don't know, you know how Peyton Manning, who was still as smart as ever, but his body isn't what it used to be. I don't know how he's going to keep up. Denver, look, they punched it out with Tom Brady. That defense, Von Miller and Demarcus Ware, they lifted that team up. But, boy, it's a whole different brother with Cam Newton. It's a whole different ball game with Cam Newton. But, hey, man, you know, to me it's a change of the guard. It's like it's out with the old and in with the new. You know, no, no pun intended. I think it's uh, um, Cam Newton is coming in young. He's a winner on every level. Hyman Trophy. A national championship, five years in the NFL, now he's in the Super Bowl. He is going to shine big, and um, it's just a new, you know, change of the guard. What do you think about all this stuff the media's making? I've never seen a guy like Cam Newton. I, I, I think part of it is, I mean, there is obviously a generational and a cultural gap. That you'd be naive to ignore that, but I think the media is puffing it up, kind of like when Doug Williams took the Redskins to Super Bowl Twenty Two. I know. Uh, what do you think about that, Joker? Man, I just think that um, I think that the old guard is going out kicking, and um, they see this, the new things are changing. And it's just the resistance of the, um, you know, the old culture. You know what I mean? The old school fighting, you know, the, the new wave coming in. Absolutely. And I think you're just seeing the backlash of that. Uh, yeah, oh, we got, I guess we should, oh, we'll save that yeah. for next week. Yeah, oh, we'll save that for next week. Our, our picks, man. Nigel, we want to thank you, man, for have, having you on and coming on today and calling in. Uh, we want to say good luck to you and to the Port Allen Pelicans. Um, I'm signing off. This is Joker P. Gerard Piper. You know, I want to say peace to the, all the listeners out there and to my family and friends. A big shout out to uh, the Louisiana Eagles semi-pro football team, my new squad. Uh, Perry would say, if you're listening, ADT, JNS, he loves you and have a good afternoon. We'll see you next week on the Louisiana All-American Sports Show. Yeah, boy. Take care, everybody. Check out from the evil here to the king. Lives of love, may he protect us from evil.